everybody. How is everyone today? We are recording live on YouTube. So if you guys have to drop off or you guys want to watch a replay, it's on there. So we have 16 people here today. How is everyone? Did everyone come to our last meeting and hear Jen, Jen and I's announcement? Or is there anybody that doesn't know? Well, sounds like everyone knows. Okay, Amber doesn't know. Okay. So um, I also put it on my story. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, it's there. So Jen and I... Elephant Challenge is defunct, but Jen and I want to still keep on keeping on with this and helping you guys get your first deal. Um, so what we're going to do is we have this conundrum where we get new people coming in here, like, which is good. It's not a bad thing, but if this is like your first or second zoom, like put a one in the chat. Um, and it's a good thing. So Tammy, yes, we love that Tammy's here. Bliss. We love that bliss is here. We love it when new people are here. However, it's like always ongoing. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a little mini course or like a masterclass. Look, Amber, Moni, so many people. Um, and then we have people that have been here for a while. Um, I see Atia in here and Jacob, they've been in here. Um, and so we want to meet everybody where they are. Um, and so we were doing being like, okay, everybody that's been here for a while, just hang on this first part. We're going to go over like a quick and dirty version of like, um, how you find your market, how you talk to agents, motivations, blah, blah, blah. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do a five day challenge, um, in two weeks where it's free. We're not going to charge you for this, um, where we go over all of that. So people that are new here and you come into these zooms, we're like, we love that you're here, but we want you to get caught up with us. So we are going to have you guys watch this 5G challenge. We'll replay it. There's going to be homework every day. Um, and then these Zooms will still keep on keeping on. And you guys will be able to come into these Zooms. Like we have one, two, three, four, five brand new people. I'll be like, love that you guys are here. Go do this homework for a five day challenge. It'll be one hour a day. It's not going to take a lot of your time. And then meet us in our Zooms and you'll be caught up. That way people like Atia, who's been here for a really long, not really long time. She's been here a while. She knows this stuff. She's been submitting leads. We, she still gets value. You guys get value. We meet everybody where they are. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you're not yet, we will, um, we will put everything in the group. So building at W most of you guys, I recognize your names. I think most of you guys are in there. If you're not in there, go to www.building an empire. I've been doing fat fingers. I did a whole story on this and I spelled it wrong and people are like, it's not going anywhere. Okay. So I just put it in the chat building an empire group. All right. Any questions on that before we get this party started until we get that that um that five day challenge going i think it is going to be two weeks i have to look at the thing it's either next week or two weeks well, i'll put it in the group and jen will put it in the group we're going to keep on like we were so so you five people that said you're brand new you might be like what the heck is going on uh feel free to answer all the questions or like how did i get here i'll kind of do that quick way of like quick recap of how we got to this place but if you guys have any questions, we're going to have um, replays. So if you guys can't make it, it'll be only an hour a day. Um, it's going to start with like the mindset of um, an entrepreneur and an investor. And like, you'll think like an investor and you'll get into that mindset. It's actually very, very important to be into mindset. I can, I can vouch for that. We'll go into that, but then we'll go into things like, um, how to find your market, how to talk to agents, what are the four pillars of motivations, how to find motivated sellers, all of that stuff. So the, those of you that have been here, you don't have to come to that. You're more than welcome to come to that um, for a refresher course. But for that week, we will not be holding. I don't think we'll be holding our Zooms. Let me just double check. He says that's very Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi. I love that. That's a really good compliment. Thank you. So, um, 
So we'll be doing that. Um, on the last call, if you guys didn't watch, I was going through, Jen and I were at a conference. Just so you guys know, we're headed towards the multi fan. We're going to still do, uh, we're still doing single. We'll still do this. But one of our goals is to move over also to the multifamily sector. And we um, are going to start raising capital for, um, for people, anybody, if you guys want to get into these big multifamilies and buy in and invest in it. Um, we're going to do probably a fund to fund with Vina Jetty. Um, yes, Grant, you're right. More doors in a single close. Um, and so a lot of it's the same. And Jen and I were talking and we're like, this is good for you guys to start on single family because you get, it helps you with the mindset of it because it really is all the same things just on a bigger level. And this is designed for people just getting started. So, um, so it's, you, it's kind of like you're dipping your toe into the water and then you go a little bit a little bit deeper and a little bit deeper and then you start doggy paddling and then you do the whole thing. So it's a good place to start. Amber says, I definitely want to get into multifamily. That's one of our goals is to help people that are getting started and bring them up to what we know and help them come with us. So there's different kinds of funds you do. Like you have to be in an accredited investor or a non-accredited investor. It's accredited as if you make, I think it's like 3 million a year year joint, 2 million a year joint with the spouses or a million a year single or something. It's you make a, you or your net worth or something. I'll have to look it up, but a lot of people aren't there and they still want to get involved. And so that you're probably a non-accredited investor. So we are going to make some funds for you guys. Um, we will get with Venus security attorneys. Anyways, that's where we were last week. That's where we're going. We'll still, we would love to bring you guys with us. Um, we'll still be doing this though. I think this is a good place to get everyone started. Rosie says, I've been wanting to do multifamily as well. So stay tuned. Look at you guys. So many people. Okay. So let's get this party started. So last week, how many were here when I called? on um yes grant fair life for the win um i am not sponsored um okay how many people were on the last call where we were going through our leads and i was calling the agents that you guys had submitted jacob was here i know he was here jacob is amazing he's a mortgage broker and he has this special um thing that helped us look up the mortgage and and interest rate because we couldn't find it on prop stream so that was really helpful so the guy ended up calling me back and I wasn't available. And then Daniel, the baby elephant who submitted the lead was like, Hey, they really want to talk to you. And I'm like, I'm tell them, hold on. I want to wait until the I'm on, I'm live because I want to bring you guys with it. So that's part of the idea with this is we bring you with us. You guys submit the leads. We show you how to find good leads, how to build rapport. We submit the leads and then we call and we try to close them and we bring you along with them. So let's, who wants, where's my phone? Did I leave it in the kitchen? I might have to go get it. Who wants to hear me call them back? Yeah, it's in the kitchen. Okay, hold on, you guys. BRB, I have to go get my phone. Okay, I'm ready. I'm back. Got my phone. Apparently I have milk on me too. Let's just do that. Okay. Okay. Let me find him. So um, was anyone not here? Do you want to go over what we went over? You want to just see it real fast? Let me pull it up. Come on. My internet's so slow. Okay opportunities. So this one, so this one was a little bit of a tough one. Um, let's see if this is it. So this one was, it's in a population of 3000 people. So that is kind of, it's not a deal breaker, but it's not 
there's different things. Like you just like, it's like a scale. So it's like, that's not the best because that means there's probably not a lot of buyers. Um, so then we like to look at uh, median home price income. Why? You have a hot, a bigger buyer pool. So this one is, um, and it's kind of like, like, well, is it really good terms? It might even it out, you know? So it's kind of like a scale that you do this with. So here's the property. This one is a little bit tough. Um, so this one, it's in Crosby, Texas, which is outside of Houston. It's a, it's a town of 3000 people. So it's 1.7 million. So I can just tell you off of not knowing much, but knowing home prices in Texas, that's a lot of money for Texas. Texas has usually good prices of houses. And then on top of that, it's a three population 3000. So the, our buyer pool is just like going down. This is like a venue situation. Like there's a barn. Let's go look at all of them. So this one, I don't, they said they were open to creative. Let me pull up the information. What else do we have um, for this one? Nope. That's the form. Hold on. So this is what they said about it. No mortgage open to terms. So no mortgage. I should have read that before we just went 30 minutes down the road of looking at the mortgage terms with Jacob on his thing more. If they said no mortgage open to term last buyer fell through and private financing fell through currently. So this is going to be a mindset. You want to think like an investor. Currently there's three RV pads, a main home, a tiny home. You can rent all of those out. There's a lot of space to add more homes or RV pads. Um, the owners are senior citizens who are ready to retire and move on. They are open to creative financing. The property was used as an event center, so you can make money with this and has an office building as well. They likely ran their business out of, it could be remodeled to housing. It has a full kitchen and restrooms, the barn. So there's so many different streams of income. There's a barn. Best part of the downstairs is office spaces. It's such a cool property. Okay, so that's what we know about it. So we called him. This is what it looks like. Um, I don't know if I'll have a buyer for this. This one's going to be tough. I am not a buyer for an event center in Texas. If you guys know any, we'll pay you for bringing buyers. You guys can earn while you learn on this. Yeah, Tony, you're right. There's a 250K price drop. So that is, we're going to look at the motivation there. We see that it's been how many days on market? I never use Zillow, so don't worry. Like 230 days on market. And let's go to the price drop. Look how many times the price has changed. So it was listed for sale in March, changed the price, dropped at 5% in July, another 4.1% at the end of July. End of August dropped at 7%. Um, it looks like yesterday they dropped it 12.8%. So 1.7. So this started out as a $2.3 million property. Okay. Grant says the location is the toughest part on that one. That and the price because Texas home prices are super low usually. Okay. Um, my gut says this is not going to be something that we'll be able to do, but I'm going to call you. We're going to you guys are going to come along with me on this. We need to know what their total rents or income or they're totally receiving. Absolutely, Kremas. So what are the things, what else are we going to ask them? Um, Krima made a very good point. They've made this a business. We need to see like the rents and like um, their prof profit and loss statement, all of that stuff. Um. Yes, Lynn says um, ta property taxes seem so low listed here. I thought Texas taxes were high. I agree. I wonder why that is so low. Well, they also have the tax assessment at 854,000. That is really low. You're right. That's a good point. Lynn, Lynn is absolutely right. Ta usually that's the catch 22 with Texas properties. The prices are low, but the taxes are high um, because they don't have income tax. Grant says, is it an LLC? 
It, oh, Rosie, that's a good one. She says it might be ag exempt. So that's agricultural exempt for farmers. Um, Yeah. So that's going to be really interesting to find out. Anything else you guys want me to ask? You think I should ask? I'm trying to get you guys to think like an investor. So um, what is the current rent they receive on the property and from what source? Love it, Jacob. What would it take for them to accept a deal? Love it. Okay. Very good. Okay. So let's call, unless you guys have any questions. Let's Let me see here. Just a second. Let me see what number I called last time. Because I think I talked to a guy last time and this is Vicky. It says, so hold on. Um, where's that text they sent me? No, sorry, guys. Talk amongst yourselves. Okay. I called, oh, I know why I didn't call this line. I called this guy on here. I called a, a guy, Robert McWilliams, and then they gave me Vicky. Okay, so let me go call Vicky. Hold on. Okay. Oh, shoot. I need to plug in my charger. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go get the charger because I don't want it to die. I'm ready. I promise this time. Thanks for being patient. Okay. Oh, Privy. Tyson says Privy has 22 property tax, 22 property taxes listed at 14,794. That looks a lot more uh accurate. Okay, here we go. I'm calling Vicky on this property in Crosby, Texas. Let me know if you guys can't hear. Hi, is this Vicky? What? Hi, is this Vicky? Hello? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you you called me over the door. I can hear you. Oh, sorry, I don't know what's going on with my phone. No, that was me. I was, um, I, I... um, sorry, I was just, um, someone was just passing by. Um, so my name is Carly Grunman, and you talked with Daniel my business partner about your listing on, um, in Crosby, Texas on, I'm going to butcher the name noise road. You got it. Did I get it? Yes. I, that was me. And I'm like, I totally get it. I could hear the beeps going on and I know what that's like. So sorry. Okay. 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 So sorry. I couldn't get a, I, we've been playing phone tag since, and I know you contacted Daniel this morning. So I'm glad we got, we got connected finally, but, um, he was saying so that you guys might be interested in, um, seller finance situation and just wanted to get more information on the house and like what you guys are looking for and a little bit more information. Um, mm -hmm. 
been thinking that thing I'm supposed to be saying here probably won't okay be yep thinking. take your time no um, rush um, he cut off before right at two, and now he's down to 1.7. Okay. And so the owners are senior citizens. They have sold several of their businesses and are ready just to retire and travel the world in their RV. Nice. So, yeah, very nice. So they're down mm -hmm. to 1.7, um, and it is owner financed as an option. Mm -hmm. and the down payment is, is 8%, so it's $136,000. Okay. And then um, at 4% interest. For 96 months. At the end of 96 months, there'll be a lump payment, a balloon payment for, uh, oh, the monthly payments, payments excuse me, is uh, $7,460. Here, hold on just a second. Let me write this down just a second. Um, okay. So say that again. because. Um, yes, the down payment is 136 okay. Interest rate is 4%. The monthly payment would be seven thousand four hundred sixty-six dollars and seventy-eight cents. Say that. Sorry, seven thousand what? Four six six. Okay. Point seven eight. Okay. For ninety-six months. Okay. And the balloon balloon payment would be one point three two seven three eight two. Okay. Okay. So um. Questions on those, just a few things. Um, are they hard and set on an eight-year balloon? Uh, we're they're flexible. They're open for discussions. Okay. Um, is number one. Number two, I was reading on the the it has RV pads and business. You know, like it's it could be an income property. Do they have have they been using it as an income producing property? Um, to like rent out the barn for weddings or RV pads or what have you. Maybe it's going to help with this. So yes. It's their primary residence. Okay. So it's just a home. Okay. And then they had a business. And so they, um, they have built out the property to meet their needs. And the owner owned a construction company as well. So when they wanted something built, guess what? They built it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So I'm walking, so I have to walk and talk. And so, okay. um, and so it started out, they owned a business, uh, a medical billing business. Okay. And they were operating, they were leasing space in town. And then as they grew, they're like, this is silly that we're leasing space. And so then she had like a, a passion project to have an event center. I love so that. They built this 6,700 square foot, amazing barn to have an event center. They utilize the property well because this this barn, because part of it, the upstairs feature is being used for office spaces and part of the downstairs as well. Nice. Well, they they acquired another company, so they needed more space. So they built an actual office building. Wow. I know, right? And that office building has um, a full kitchen, has restrooms, has uh, um, executive offices, has cubicle space, has conference rooms. It could easily be converted into residential space if needed. Okay. And then their son moved back. So they built a tiny home. Love that. I know, right? I you love this. Yeah. I know. And so some of the employees, they want them, they're very kind people, and mm -hmm. they wanted them living on site. So they built three RV pads and bought RVs and put the employees there. Amazing. So, right? And so when we say short term rental, that's been secondary. Okay. They ran, and so eventually the other businesses got to be so, so, so successful, they couldn't handle the event center any longer. Wow. So they shut that down and just started really working on the medical billing companies. Okay. Well, they want to retire. They have an RV, and they just want to travel. Hmm. And so they were like, we're done with this. So they just want to sell everything. Okay. So there's a primary home that was built in 2002, four-bedroom, three-bath. The tiny home, which is the one one, the big giant ass barn. <laughs> <laughs> that is huge. I know. I'm looking at pictures of it right now. Yeah. And then the RV pad. So it has so much potential. So he has been the office building he's leasing out right now to a fiber optic company. Okay. And I think they're charging like eighteen hundred dollars a month. It's a month to month lease. Okay. The um barn is being used. They have a company called Owl Batting who's doing like Owl, uh, no, owl batting practice, batting training 
Okay. In the in the barn. So the barn has, they can use it for almost anything. You know, they have batting cages set up there now and they're doing batting practice in there. Okay. And he, um, he recently had the RV pass and the tiny house rented out. And I think the RV pass was 400 each. And look at my notes for that tiny house. But those are, he's vacated all those homes in the RV pass because they were trying to move out. Okay. So those, he's not, he doesn't have income on those. But again, the income was secondary because really the, the major income was coming from their business. Mm-hmm. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, okay. So do they happen to have, I'm just like any profit and loss statements for like the event center or anything that we could look at just to kind of see what it could produce? Yes, I can, I can get some of those to you and I have a profit and loss on like the RV pads and the okay. stuff he has right now going on. But again, I think those are loose because yeah. those were almost secondary things to them. I get that. And, and the event center was most like a passion project for her. Okay. Like, sounds cool. Let's do this, you know? Yeah. And so they had weddings because the, the, the property itself is beautiful. They did weddings outside. They have a gazebo. They have two ponds and, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of stuff outside. Um, so I don't know how long they had the event center running. Maybe a couple of years. I okay. Can't remember. But then once it closed down, they did like um, watch parties. Yeah. Like um, baseball games when we're Astros Houston's were on the World Series, or mm-hmm. they'd have baseball teams over. He's he's got a big baseball background. Oh, cool. Um, they have, yeah, they had watch parties over and birthday parties and and corporate events and kept on doing small things like that mm-hmm. when we went off on the side when someone wanted to come over. Yeah. So the property is right at five acres, and then there's a private road. They own the road. It's a 2.78-acre nice. um, road. Now, it's a long road. On that road, there's maybe maybe 10 houses, maybe. Yeah. Uh, other Yes, and I think the video, did Daniel see the video as well? No, but I, like- I, I don't think I saw it, but I, I'm looking at the picture of the road with all the houses on it right now. Yeah, yeah. And so they own that, that road is theirs. Whoever buys the property maintains that road. Okay. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Um, let me ask you this. Just curious. Um, mm-hmm. Are they selling their uh, medical billing business as well? well? They have gifted. They have two of them. <gasps> Oh. Why aren't some of their employees? Oh, you know, they're such people good are... people. Oh my God, you have no idea. Oh, oh I love God. that. Yes, they have gifted one of them. The other one, they have sold it. Okay. Okay, good to yes. know. Yes. Okay. And the event center has been, you know, not active for, for a couple of years now. So, yeah. Do they have like, like just information on what it was going for and like what they were renting it for when it was active? Yeah. Okay. That would be amazing. Yeah. It's when it was open. Oh, good. Um, okay. Yeah. And it might have an old Facebook page out there, maybe. Okay. And I can get the information for the rentals. It was several years ago, but I certainly get the information on that. Okay. Perfect. And I'll go look it up. Um, And then we'll just kind of, I'll just kind of run some numbers and just like look at, um, there it is. I see the Facebook page. I'll go look it's it up. Probably, it's ancient, but yeah. But it's it still good. Yeah. yeah, perfect. It's it's just good to look yeah. at. Um, do you think you could send me that um all that information to my email? Yes, I will. Um perfect. You are amazing. Thank you so much for taking my call. And I'm trying to think. I think that's all. Um Road maintenance expenses. Do you know about how much that would they spend on that each year? Some questions I thought that's that's pretty important. Yeah. Uh, some memory right now. I think he's like twenty five or so, maybe. Hang on. Okay. So if he remembers, hang on. Okay. Remember three thousand a year, but I can get three thousand on that as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know what the do you know what the I don't know if this will be in the documents that you send over, but do you know what the annual overhead to maintain the property and all the events that they spent on it yearly or monthly? I don't. Okay. But I'll ask those questions. Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Okay, perfect. 
Um, and if I miss anything, just call or text. Perfect. Me. I really wanted this, you know, we said this or whatever that is, you know? So, um, so I will, my homework to you is to get those PLs to you. Okay. Yeah. And I'll clarify on the expense and maintenance of the road. And, you know, maybe you could try to turn around that and sell it back to the county, you know? Yeah. That's, that's a good point too. Yeah. Then we would have to maintain it. Yeah. You know? So that, that could be an option. So whatever for the county for 2.78 acres, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. That, and you were asking about the event center, any kind of numbers you can get for the event center. Yes. What did I miss? something else um just like the like the profit and loss statements like anything so we can just see how much they would be like how much they spent to maintain the property how much they brought in i i understand that it's secondary and it's not like a fully mm -hmm. like stabilized business but right. just to have some clues on like what it was like in the past and what we could do with it okay. so, so amazing it was good talking to you too thank you so much and I'm glad you got your, your truck parked and <laughs> I know, I know how that goes. I have a truck myself too. I recognize that beat. So yeah. Yeah. Yes. I know. I know. Now they have trucks that will like back it up for you, which is crazy. Isn't that crazy? I know. Get a new Ford truck. They have that. You just press a button and it does it with a trailer. I need that too. Truck and it does have some kind of clear backup thing. You just never set it up. Yes. I get it. I get it. I'll drive the boat. I'll sit on the boat. I'm not going to launch the boat. Yeah. I get it. Okay. Yes. If you need something else, just ask, okay? Okay, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Take care. Bye. 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 All right. What did you guys think? I muted you guys because someone was talking and it threw me off. Hold on. I'll let you guys unmute. We don't have that many. Uh, so lot, lots of moving parts and pieces, number one. There are. Um, it's definitely, it almost seems like you'd have to find, I don't think like a single investor would have buy this. You probably have to find like two or three that want to handle multiple portions of this because there's so much going on, um, which could potentially complicate it. But I think, I don't think they're entirely unreasonable because if you have to pay them, you know, if you can negotiate the balloon to even 10 or 15 years, because the way, when I did the math, between the down payment and what they want monthly, it essentially that covers the first 50%. So you're looking at an 850K lump sum after the balloon ends. So okay. if you can push that further down the road, but you are getting roughly a third of the rent covered if you just keep those existing tenants in place. Yeah. Um, I almost think too, potentially, if you had like one or two investors, it may make sense if they can like have somebody go live in one of the tiny homes to be like an on-site manager to keep an eye on everything, at least initially while they kind of get their bearings, because, you know, that's so like you're talking road maintenance, you have the event center, you have all the leasing. I mean, that's just a lot. It's a lot. Karima even says there's just so many moving parts. Like this does not sound this like you, this is, so this is just like Grant said, just like Karima said, this, it's not a bad deal, but you have to find the perfect investor. One that's not afraid of too many parts. One that's not afraid of rural Texas. One that wants to run an event business. You know, so one that wants to have a tiny home. It's like Jacob said, it's not impossible, but you'll need to find a solution for several investors in the Houston area. So this is why we tell you guys, think like an investor. So um, where you'll want to get stuff where there's going to be a bigger buyer pool because we could do all of this work. It's a lot of work and we don't want to waste anyone's time. We don't want to waste her time or the seller's time, you know, because they, this is their livelihood. They'll make a big commission on this. Um, but you, you, we're not going to have, it's, it's definitely a very niche, niche investor location and business. So that kind of is not, um, 
I still stand by the sentiment, though, that with Pace buying the ranch in Montana, it's the perfect place for community camp south. <laughs> Not that he wants to dump a bunch of money into it, but it's the perfect venue. And you just get you know, somebody maybe on Jerry site. Jerry Norton could make one. You know, his, there you go. His buddies. So, and, and that's what I was thinking, too. For those of you guys that don't know, Pace bought a house in Montana with a barn, and he's going to live there in the summers in Kalispell. And he's going to have community camp up there and he'll rent out the barn for weddings and it will maintain itself. So it's creative and it's also an income property that he gets to use for a second home. Um, Jacob says event centers have overhead. When looking at lots like this, you need to find the NOI, which is the net operating income, right? So like this NOI is used a lot in multifamily um, or commercial real estate, which is like where they have businesses. Um, when you look in a multifamily, it's like, because it's like a full on business itself, it's how much it costs to run the business. Um, and Tia makes a good point too. She says, and it can be seasonal. Um, I got married in January and everyone, it was easy because everyone was not working. All the events that happen are in the spring and the summer. And in the fall, there's like nothing happening in the middle of January, which is when I got married. So it was good, good for me because there was no competition, bad for the event center owners and all the people that work in weddings for a business. Um, yeah, Bliss is it's more of a passion project for someone who has always wanted a venue. And so I don't, I want to be very cognizant of their time and all this. And I don't, we don't want to drag people along. You know, we want to be like, it's for me or it's not for me. So what I'll do is I'm going to float it out there in the sub two group and be like, this is what I have. I'm going to get all of the information from her. Maybe we can have Jen go over this. She is the one that goes over the big stuff like this. She's, I can do it, but she's more seasoned at it. I mean, we can have her go over it on Monday when our call. Um, so, um, We'll wait for, to get that information. I'll text her my email. Let me just text her real quick. Else I will forget. And um, hold on. Uh, uh. Okay. Sorry. Um, what else? So Larissa says I have a few friends that are always looking for, but you guys are in Tennessee. So maybe they want a Texas thing. So like, so when you guys, um, can make money on this. So Daniel brought me the deal. And if we close that deal, he'll get a, a fee for bringing us a warm lead. If you guys, or he finds, um, a buyer, then you guys can make money from that. So we can make it a whole group project. Um, but you're, but bliss is right. It is more of a passion project and a very niche buyer. Um, okay. Let's see for future reference when trying to find the most recent tax payments, search on county name, county assessor. Yep. That's true. Always go to the, go straight to the source, the county assessor in the county name or the state. So I live in Pierce County, Washington. If I wanted to look at the best information, then I would go to the Pierce County Assessor. I'm going to also show you guys something else on Zillow. I don't know if they have it for every single um, thing. Where is it? So they sometimes have like a direct link to the County Assessor, right, with taxes. But this had a wrong tax information. And I think Texas is a non-disclosure state, so this may they might not have that. Price history. Where's the public? Okay. See right here. It says public tax history. And um, then it says find assessor info on the county website. So if you guys use Zillow, it, it links you to the, to the website, Harris County. And then we could go here and look at appraisal. So then we would just go search for property, search by address. 
So we can come here. It is just a second. Let me go to the thing. Eight one eight three zero two. Lost it. N O Y C D. I like to just do um, the first three on these assessor things. It usually works. Okay, so here we go. These are the people that own it, Noyce Road in Crosby, Texas. So here is good information that you can find out. We're seeing how much they pay in um, ISD, Harris County, Board of Houston Authority. This is how much they've paid, how much it was appraised for. Value as of January 1st. And I will keep in mind, the appraisal values are usually lower than the market value, which you want to keep, especially in non-disclosure states, because you don't, non-disclosure means you don't have to tell the state what you paid for the property. So they just have to guess. It doesn't help them. It doesn't help you as a taxpayer to tell them what you paid for it because they valued it at 854 and you paid 2.3 for it. Your taxes are going up. Um, So this is this is all the information that you can find on. Um, so these are all the things it has. It has a pool, four-sided closed metal pole barn, canopy, carport, frame utility shed. So these are all the, the uh, not fixtures, buildings they have on the property, what it has. So that's that's kind of what Jacob was saying. Bimini, you have a question. Hi, Carly. Um, I'm driving, so I was just, I haven't been paying attention to the chat or anything, but coming from a horse person's perspective, this has a huge, a lot of potential. Yeah, it does. And I just was wondering if you could add um, in what you asked the, the agent there, whether or not there's any other land around it that might be available for sale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and the reason being that, you know, you would need more, more land for more horses um, from that perspective. But those, the RV pads and, and all of that kind of stuff would be useful to somebody um, investing in, in a horse business side of things. Yes. Um, but I was, I, I like the idea of, of presenting this possibly to, to pace as he's the one that's constantly going after funny stuff but <laughs> as us coming together as a group underneath you yeah. and and possibly investing in it as well i see i, I know a lot of people in, in the in the chat have said you know that it's it's got too many moving pieces and everything but thinking at it from somebody that has her life with horses this is a beautiful property and has significant opportunity and i've got a couple of people that i'm actually going to reach out to and say hey i know you're not investing in texas at the moment but you know do you want to <laughs> so i'm gonna i'm gonna do that as well but i just i think if you look at it from a different aspect and not necessarily just an event venue but from uh, uh, you know the agricultural business perspective side of it. Yes. Um, and that's, it's so good to think outside of the box. It's not just, but still, again, you have to find a very niche person, like a horse person that has money that wants to, that has the ability to monetize this property or has the money just to live in it and not make it out of a business. Um, right. Yeah. So um, good points. And so just like when you said, go out there, if you guys want, this can be like a whole group thing. Try to find buyers. We'll have Jen come on and, um, analyze the stuff and show you how she might underwrite it and show you like, it's going to be tough though, because like she said, this was not like a stabilized business. This was a passion project. Um, so 
So the numbers are going to be tough. It's not like you can form a whole thing off of it, but it's a little, it gives you a little peek into what, what it could do. Atia, yes. Hi there. Ah. Sorry, I have a little cough. So if it's a little oh, no. raspy. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I just wanted to ask you uh, if we're ready to move on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So I have a couple of realtors now who are reaching out to me. And one I submitted um, to you a couple of days ago. Uh, and we can talk about that. And then there's another realtor in um, Atlanta who's been sending, she sent me something yesterday and then she sent me three today but they're all cash That's um so i'm not sure i told her i said well i'll have to get back to you tomorrow afternoon i wasn't sure how to respond yeah. to that question um so so this one it's we cash is not impossible um you're you're gonna have to buy them deep if you're gonna wholesale cash deals um, I what have, you when, you, when you say buy them deep, meaning cheaper, yes, cheaper. So you'll find like <clears throat> the market value of it and you'll go like 30 to 40% off, which is usually a big turnoff for people. Mm -hmm. However, um, these are great for flippers. You said it was in Atlanta, right? Well, there's one in Atlanta that she sent me. And then the three she sent today are in Marietta. Okay, so so the 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 pros of this one is Atlanta, Georgia, and Georgia as a state is mm -hmm. a good place to invest. So yeah. there's a pro. Um, people are still buying cash for sure. Um, you'll just have to talk to her and be like, um, so like one of the tactics we use is we go cash, cash, cash terms last. So we'll be like, if they're stuck on cash, and be like. Yes, we can give you cash. We will give you cash. Um, but it's gonna have to be a deep discount, like um, because just because of what's going on right now. Interest rates are high, so it's mm -hmm. gonna be harder for people to get a mortgage. You know, like if our exit strategy is to sell it on market, you know, mm -hmm. interest rates are high. Um, might have to so we're gonna have to build in some stuff for us. Um, for it to make sense as an investor. So we're like, okay, we'll give you cash, but it's going to be at a really deep discount. Usually they're like, mm, no. Then you can say, but I can give you your price if you give me terms. Hmm. So find out from this person, their motivation. Why are they selling? What do they need? Do they need the cash right now? Um, if they don't need the cash right now, then you can maybe pitch the idea of like, take it in installments and then your tax burden will be a lot less. You know, if it's mm -hmm. a whole cash deal right now at 30% is going to uncle Sam on tax day. Um, the, versus if you sell or finance it out, they get little baby chunks and they just, they keep more of their money in the long run. Yeah. So when I asked her about um, terms, the one for the Atlanta one, she said that they're open, but I think she said two years. Okay. Um, and then today I said, well, are they open to creative? And she said, no, they want cash. And it sounds like it's one, I just sent her a note. She hasn't responded yet, but it looks like there's three properties, three houses that are all in the same kind of neighborhood. So I'm assuming it's one owner who owns these okay. three houses. Yeah. And I'm guessing, <clears throat> you know, people are, people are jumping ship they are. to an extent. And so I think he, the person who owns it is probably just liquidating properties. Yeah. But she said he or whoever it is, they just want cash. And so and don't be afraid to pull away, do the pull away. Sometimes it works. So like we like I always say to you guys, we're not your first option. We want to be your last option. So build the rapport, you know, and be like, just be like, I won't be your buyer if it's cash at market value. Um, but go ahead and try to sell it. And if you guys change your mind, I'm here. You know, mm -hmm. and so it's okay to do the pull away. You don't want to, you need them to like, they need to have a high motivation to sell usually on terms or at a deeper discount. So just let, watch interest rates. I, my guess is they're going to go up again before the yeah. end of the year. I don't mm -hmm. know if they are, I'm not a professional, but they're going to look at it one more time before the end of the year. And they have the opportunity to make it go up again. I don't, 
And I think it's going to, it's going to put the squeeze on people a little bit more. So you just, especially with the on market stuff, we go for those <laughs> high days on market because they're feeling the squeeze. They're feeling the pain. They feel that we want them to feel the market is saying, no, thank you. I'm not buying your house. Right. And then that only helps our case more because if the interest rates go up, then it's going to be harder for him to sell again because that house just got a lot more expensive, even at a lower price for somebody. Well, um, all of these are off market. Okay. So one yesterday, I mean, she texted me, I think twice yesterday mm -hmm. asking me if, you know, if I'd found out anything, because I told her, I said, well, I need to go to my partner and find out if this is something that's going to be workable. That was yesterday morning. And yesterday afternoon, she sent me back a text asking me if I'd talked to anybody. So there's She's a little motivated. bit of desperation. Yes. Um, so on her part, I don't know about the seller, but. Probably. So like, we'll just need to like, I mean, you're, you're playing it well. You're not like you're not trying to like oversell them and be, and just be like, listen, this is how we buy. If you have, if it's not us, that's fine. If you have anything else that would fit this, I'm here. I buy that. And then follow up. The name of the game is follow up. Like, and just keep an eye on it and be like, Hey agent, I saw that. Um, you're not, we don't, it's still on market what's going on? Have you guys changed your, are you guys willing to sell at this price? Or are you willing to give us terms just to get it off? And so you just want them to marinate in their desperation a little bit longer. So, okay. and it's good hmm. also because these, um, did they say why they're selling it? Like we can come, we can guess, but find the, yeah. um, I asked her, yeah, the one yesterday I asked her and she said she didn't know why they were selling and today I just sent her a note she hasn't responded yet but okay. I'm just I'm assuming and like I said these are these are off-market deals um and so if I go back to her and say you know we're we're open to looking at at cash but it's going to be at a deep discount and if she says what does that look like should I yeah. give her a ballpark should I, I I'm not sure where to take it from there how much do they want for it and then how much do you think it would go for on market and use comps? Do you remember watching how we did comps? Right. Yeah. I haven't had a chance to look at these three because I was okay. That's fine. driving and she sent them to me, but there's, yes. um, there's three houses. They're all two, two bedroom, one bath. And for each of them, they're asking 240 cash. Okay. So, so I'm now not sure and, maybe, hmm. and maybe like look at them and comp them if you feel comfortable comping them um, using privy or Zillow or however, and I can give you the comping guidelines and then see what it would go for and then find out the condition. Like, is this something that needs to be flipped? Is it a junkie house that you need? It needs work. Mm -hmm. so put all of like, put all of that in there of like the condition, how old the roof is, how old the AC is, the heater, expensive stuff. Um, kind of like find out all that information comp it and then see how far apart you are from the market value to like what they want for it mm -hmm. and after repair value. And then you can go from there and just be like, how close is it? If it's like right on the money, you're going to want it to like 40% off 50 to 40% off. And they are going to be like, uh, no, you know, yeah. likely unless they're desperate. And yeah. then you can be like, we will do terms if that's what it is. And then they might say no. And you'd be like, okay, I'm going to follow up with you when it's not sold in a month and a half and the interest rates have gone up. Don't say that, but right. yeah, but it's, it's understood. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. She just sent me a text said, please work out your bottom line while I get more info. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, I have to have the info before I can give you a, anything. Yeah. Please let me, yeah. So find out, like do the whole four pillar situation, motivation, condition, timeline, price. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it'll just a lot of fact finding information. I feel like we're, you're very good and we are very good at reading between the lines, mm -hmm. the, the desperation, like, Hey, Hey, you got, what's your deal? What, hey, are you going to buy this? Are you going to buy this? So, I mean, that's good. Right. And so pay attention to all that nonverbal or like that 
not direct communication. Okay. So, and the one I sent yesterday, <clears throat> it's in Durham. Let's, see. or I'm sorry, where is it? We have, oh, yeah. Durham. Is it rid? Yeah. Let me see. Is it? It's a five, five bedroom, three bath. Okay. I see this one. Um, and they are it looks open like it's for rent. rent. Yeah, I think they're renting it. It rents. That's what I forgot to put in the form. I think that rents for two thousand five hundred. It's it's. They're trying yeah. to rent it out right now for twenty nine hundred. Okay. That's. Let's see. And then so, it's still it's for sale and for rent. Well, yeah. The realtor sent me a note yesterday, and she said she has an off market deal in Durham. Okay. Uh, rents for she said twenty five hundred, but okay. Um, and she said the seller's open to seller financing, um, and they're asking five and a quarter, or no five fifty. Sorry. Um, Tara has been renovated. The seller has other properties she wants to offload. So from these, I would be like, what kind of terms are they open to? So they're open to seller finance. Is there a mortgage? Um, it's free and clear. She says. Nice. And then do they know, do you know why they want to sell it? Let's see. Yeah, she just, I asked that, but it, she just said they're just offloading it. Okay. Which is a common answer. No, it's, it'll be, it'll be good to kind of like dig, dig deep, you know, and then like the second follow-up question being like, is there any structural issues with it? How old is the roof? You know, like, are they, is there deferred maintenance? Like that would be a good thing to ask, you know, and kind of just, I feel like it's a cop out when they're like, we're, they're just done. Like they just don't give you an answer. I feel like it makes me feel like there's more. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know? <laughs> when I hear that, sometimes I think, well, they're too embarrassed to say that they just, they they need the cash or they can't afford it anymore. And that's perfectly but fair too. Yeah. It, it would be good if they would just really answer it. I know. So, and what I can do is I'll call, I'll call on it. Um, She's the same person different. who um, I sent you that other deal in North Carolina, the one where they... Uh, the terms were really tight. Yes. Yes. Um, so, it, and so you guys look what Atia is doing. She, these are, she's bringing us off market deals. You guys don't have to go on market. It's just the easiest way to get started because Atia has been here for a minute. So she's been calling agents and what she's been doing is she's been building rapport with agents. And now she's at the point where agents are like, Hey, Atia, I got, something that's off market and they're bringing them to her. So instead of her going out to hunt for deals, they're coming into her now because she's been consistent. She's built rapport. She's very good on the phone. If you guys ever listen to her, she's very professional. Um, and people take her seriously. So now she's at this point and that's what you guys want to get to. That's we, so you guys don't have to do agent outreach. It's just the easiest to get started. Um, and then you guys will end up agents bringing you deals so well thank you atia i'll go call these later i'll send you the um the recording okay all right thanks um and then uh, we're about up on time my kids are out of school this week and they're at my my in-laws house so i got i gotta go get them right now but um if you guys aren't getting the group if you have any questions like follow-up questions Post them in the group, tag Jen and I, people will be in there answering your questions. It's www.buildingandempire.group. I'll put it in here. Um, it's our new like circle. Um, and then we'll also have information on that, uh, that five day challenge that we're doing. And thank you guys for coming. Uh, we have 21 people here, which is huge. Because the elephant challenge is dead. So it's, I love that you guys are sticking with this. Thank you for still coming. And we, I appreciate you guys. So um, I hope you guys have a good day. Get in there. If you guys have any questions, ask me in.